If you've never had a pan potato pancake before, you are in for such a treat. They're mostly potato, but they're really well seasoned. There's a bit of onion and they're crispy on the outside and a little tender on the inside and they're so good. We eat them with sour cream. Some people eat them with applesauce. Some people do fancier toppings. So we're gonna do a little bit of that today. A Little bit of everything. Put the potatoes down, Dab. Put the potatoes down, Dab. <laughs> okay. Hi, welcome back to The Smitten Kitchen. Today we're making potato pancakes or latkes. These are a traditional fried pancake that are often made in Jewish cuisine over Hanukkah. But I would like to make the argument that fried potato pancakes that are golden and crisp and salty are amazing all times of the year. But the only rule for Hanukkah food is that food should be fried in oil. And the reason why it's fried in oil is to commemorate the oil that lasted in the synagogue that was destroyed that was only supposed to last one night but lasted eight. To make potato pancakes, we're gonna use russet potatoes, we're gonna use a yellow onion, one egg, salt, pepper, and then I have two slightly unusual ingredients. I use potato starch, but you could also use flour or matzo meal if that's what you have. And I put a little bit of baking powder in too. To start my potato pancakes, I peel the potatoes. I am using one pound of russet potatoes here. I like these best for latkes because they are a little bit more floury and I find that they make a more light and crispy pancake. So welcome to the portion in the episode where I start bawling over an onion because I have very sensitive eyes. I feel like your cameras are still rolling. <laughs> this came up in the last season and I got a lot of emails and comments from people and I want to thank you for all of your advice on how to ball less when I peel onions and I'm sorry I'm not taking any of it. I do not learn. <laughs> The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to grate the potato and the onion. And you can do this by hand. I don't like to because I like the way machines grate it. So I like if it fits to put the potato in sideways if you have a large shoot like this. I like it because then you get these longer strands of grated potato, which makes your pancakes look a little bit more like ropey mops and ropey mop style latkes make me very happy. Whew. Okay, here we go. I'm getting verklempt. It's getting, it's very, it's very um, oniony in the kitchen right now. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to dump <laughs> all of this into a towel so that we can wring it out. Potatoes have a ton of liquid in them, and I find that getting all of that water out makes for really crispy pancakes. You can use a piece of cheesecloth, although I find a lint-free, linen-y type towel works great. We have this lovely little ball of potato and onion. Okay. So next we are going to season it. I like to use a nice amount of black pepper, and then I use a teaspoon of salt, and my untraditional ingredient is I put some baking powder in and it is not required. You don't have to use it. I just find that the pota potato pancakes get a little bit more of a puff, a little bit more of a lift with it. And then I'm gonna toss this together just so the seasoning is well dispersed. As you can see, I really just use a fork to mix it. I don't know. I, just feel, like it should, I feel like potato pancakes should be lo-fi. It should be very easy. I'll probably start using my hands at some point too, clearly. From there, I am going to add potato starch. Potato pancakes are often made with matzo meal or they're made with flour, but I started using potato starch a couple years ago and I really like it. It has a very light flavor. I feel like the potato pancakes are extra potatoey and they don't taste heavy at all. I'm using a quarter cup. Sprinkle it over. I'm gonna try to get all the strands coated with this before I add the last ingredient, which is the egg. That way we don't have any pockets of starch once we add the liquid egg and the egg holds everything together. I have tried to make potato pancakes without eggs. It's okay. It works a lot better with an egg or with an egg replacer if you can't eat eggs. So when it starts out, it looks really dry and not at all like a pancake batter. And you might think that you have wrung out too much of the liquid, but I promise in a couple minutes, it's gonna start looking much looser. It's gonna go through a range. 
So I'm using peanut oil to fry. It's one of my favorites to fry lakazin. There's kind of an unheaviness to it after it fries. I know there's a lot of peanut allergies and if this is not something you can eat, you can use just any kind of vegetable oil or canola oil that's meant for frying. How do we know when the oil is hot enough? You could use a thermometer, but I don't because I feel like latkes should be rustic and easy and you should be able to like roll out of bed and make them for breakfast. I don't want you to think too hard about this. So what I do is I flick a little drop of water in Whoop. Don't flick it at the cameraman, flick it at the oil. I don't hear any sizzle, so I'm gonna give this another minute. There we go. It's time, let's go. You can make these any size, but I tend to make them a little bit on the small side. I almost spin it a little bit like, I don't know, like spaghetti, I guess. And then I push it off into the oil. I fit as much as I can in the pan as long as there's a little bit of space around them so it doesn't cool it off too much as it cooks. I flip it when it's got a nice golden brown underneath. So cute. See, you're so ropey. They look a little chaotic, right? Like little scribbles. They're like a kid's scribble. I tend to make them appetizer size because I'm usually thinking of like a Hanukkah party. I love to make them for cocktail parties and holiday parties. I think they're just so nice because you can put these fancy toppings on them. And so it's really nice for them to be one to two bite in size. I like when I fry something, as soon as it comes out, to hit it with a little bit of seasoning. That's kind of the best time to do it. That said, these are pretty well seasoned, so you don't need to go too heavily on them. I'm gonna fry the rest of these off, and then we're gonna plate them up. I'll show you how to top them. They're so crispy, and it smells so good in here. That batch made 20, I'd say one to two inch ones. I like them, like I said, really tiny. Um, obviously, if you were making them three or four inch, you'd get a lot far fewer. This looks like a troll head. Oh God. We do lots of Rorschachs. Okay, so this one is, I don't know, I, it, it might be hard to see, but I'm definitely seeing like an inner tube at a beach. I feel like this one just might be like a bale of hay. <laughs> I don't know, what do you think, what do you think this one looks like? What do you see? I like turnipy, carrot top, a thimble. <laughs> turnip or a thimble. All right, that's not what a turnip looks like, Deb. You clearly don't eat a lot of turnips. Oh. I will get the chives everywhere but the latkes. <laughs> I usually recommend if you're planning only to reheat them, like you're not gonna serve them right away, you can cook them kind of one shade paler because then you can spread them out on a tray in a 350 degree oven and as they toast again and rewarm, they'll get like one shade darker and they'll be exactly right. I also like to freeze them. I will freeze them in a container separated by layers of parchment paper and if you can get all the air out of it or press it out in a freezer bag, they really keep and keep. They reheat beautifully. I reheat them right from frozen, same way in a 350 degree oven. I have some salmon roe here, although you can use fancy caviar if that's your budget. I've got some creme fraiche, sour cream works too, and I have some upstate New York applesauce. And I've just tried it a few different ways. This is my family's favorite with a creme fraiche in the roe. Applesauce is very traditional. This one just has sour cream and chives, but my actual favorite is a little bit of applesauce and a little bit of cream. It's like the, the black and white cookie of Hanukkah. Mm. Mm. These are crunchy, they're tender inside, they're salty, they're crispy, it's so good. I really hope you do not limit your latke intake to Hanukkah. It is absolutely delicious this time of year. It's so nice for the holidays. I feel that there are innumerable uses for latkes and I hope you enjoy them. This is my favorite recipe. I've been making it this way for well over a decade and I think I will forever. And I hope you like the video and I hope you subscribe because we're gonna be back next week with an even awesome a recipe if possible to imagine. Bye. <laughs>